Hi folks, hope you're all well out there and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about Rocket Chat, but before I kick off on Rocket Chat, I just want to say something about the YouTube channel. I've noticed now that YouTube is enforcing adverts on even free channels and channels that did not want to have advertising, so I apologize for that. It was never my intention to have adverts on the videos. And for those of you that don't like that, I do also post my videos to Peertube as well as to Odyssey. So I'll put those links also below the video on the YouTube channel. So you're welcome to, to as I said, follow there as well. Um, the content's exactly the same. So with that out of the way, let me just talk about Rocket Chat then. I do need to apologize here as well. It's just something, Rocket Chat is something that I was testing a couple of months ago. Uh, looking for an alternative or something we could use also for one of our ham radio groups so I'd put a lot of effort and time into it and I have sort of just left it since then uh, we didn't actually end up using it we haven't decided what we want to use at this stage so I'm actually not a hundred percent completely familiar with everything I noticed there were one or two things that aren't working properly that I never actually got fixed so you know apologies around that I will anyway just give some background to it show you something about where you can install it and so on and go through the interface so you can at least just get a feel of what it does look like what it works like and show you some of the options the admin options that you've got as well so hopefully it'll still sort of suffice uh, it's just not going to be as complete maybe as some of my other videos I've done I have also recently been getting a lot back into internet relay chat again IRC so I'm hoping to do a video on that fairly soon um, and that I've been spending a lot more time on. So Rocket Chat, the, what you're seeing on, in front of you at the moment is actually the Rocket Chat website at rocket.chat. It is chiefly really a collaboration and organizing and DevOps and you can people use it for customer engagement as well. That's sort of the intention what it's pitching at really as a communication platform. People can also use it though as a social platform. I was looking specifically at it being used possibly for something like organizations or you know whether religion or social organizations or whatever that type of thing. What I do like about it is it's got a fairly modern looking interface. It looks very much like Slack. It's got the integrations and it's got very good mobile app support. So your Android and your iOS app really are first-class apps that work well also with self-hosted instances of rocket chat so yes you'll see things like pricing at the top just remember that most of the open source products that are available for free self-hosting there's a lot of time and effort you put into in hosting it you know you've got costs for hosting etc so these are options here where these guys can get some income where they are hosting it for you so it's cloud hosting you're paying actually for the cloud and the hosting not the software you, you are free at any time to take the software and go and host it yourself. So just remember that's normally an option that you've got with most open source projects that are successful because they've got to have some monetization or, or means of supporting themselves as well. It, you know, it costs them time and money as well to support the code. So if you are interested in, in a product lasting a long time that you want to make use of and it continues to get updates, especially if you're a business or even a small organization, consider... If you're not going to be paying for the hosting, consider possibly even a once-off or, or one or two, three or annual type of donation as well that you give to the project because it's just in your own interest and everybody else's interests. So, yeah, this is the website. Let's just go down. They've got a sort of a ticket tape here of some of their various um, larger clients that are using it. And you'll see there, yes, the idea is very much streamlining your communication team in a central place and you've got provision for things like separate channels and then also separate discussions and threads within each channel for organizing things so this is not a, a fully blown type product like say Facebook or ELG that I've done before I'll put a link in the top of the um, video as well to the ELG video I did that those are more fully functional type blogging platforms where you've got calendars documents uh, and a lot more organizing you know this is really focused on purely keeping it clean communication and keeping it lean and clean really so right we've got that we've covered that really before 
They're just also saying here that it covers all types of businesses actually entrusted by 12 plus million users worldwide. So Rocket Chat is very, very well used. And then the other interesting part is the integration side. So I will show a little bit about the what is already available in integration. They've got an app store type of thing where it also lists third party integrations, which you can produce and actually sell on the store if you want to. Many of them are free, but some of them are also for sale. So there's again, uh, good monetization options for those that want to monetize. And that is people's choice that they want to make. The other thing is it does also have web hooks. So with web hooks and so on, you can integrate into all sorts of other, you know, even your own applications. You're not limited only to using these apps that have been made available. So I think that's what they really mean here by unlimited integrations. I think there was also Zapier and IFTTT. So really it's it's very flexible on that side and, and you know, more so probably than something like Slack, for example, as well. You've got a lot more options here, unlimited really so you're not reliant on a on a organization or cloud services shut down your uh, integrated third-party integrations okay they've said here around the open source side why open source yes no gatekeepers infinite innovation potential you can modify it yourself for example as well C compatibility so very much around open standards you'll see as well you can import various things like user lists that sort of thing and yes, there is still security and so on as well. So open source is becoming a very, very popular option. And yes, customization as well. You can actually even, they will even customize that take special requests for customization as well. And then you will also see here all the links to the source code itself on GitHub. So you, 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 know, you could fork it as well if you wanted to create your own product, but generally people don't do that unless they're very unhappy with the, the product. So yeah, that is summarizing here again, um, the omni-channel type, the approach and price-wise. Platforms, so this is interesting. It covers all the major desktop operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux. I already mentioned iOS and Android as well. It's also got a very good mobile web interface. So you can use it just, you know, you can just use the web browser as well. But I can just show you briefly also some of the options. There's a very wide range of options here. So on Linux as well, you have got things like Snaps. You've got Docker, which will run as well on, on other platforms. Uh, there's specifically for Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, that sort of thing on Linux. AWS, Amazon. And likewise, also DigitalOcean. Uh, including just single click installs. If you buy a droplet that just, is just going to host, say, Rocket Chat, you could do a one click install and you're up and you're going and you've got your instance going. Oracle Cloud as well. So there's, there's a good many options here. Of course, you can also just compile it from the source code and install it yourself. And they do just mention here also the, the desktop apps as well. So that really is what the desktop apps look like. So what I can also show you why I was, I was originally looking at Rocket Chat uh, over Matter most was just not because of functionality per se and, and features and that sort of thing. They're, they're fairly similar. There's not a major difference. I was looking for just for ease of installation. So like I said, there was a Docker install. I am already running something called Tyson Container Manager on my OMV hosting at home. And I've done a previous video also on OMV hosting before. I run a number of applications that I'm hosting, that I'm self-hosting at home, and I'm using quick Docker install templates to, to set them up. So, you know, for example, this is, you know, these are some of the options you've, the various applications you can install. And I'm running a few of these already at the moment, but you'll see here is one, for example, for Rocket Chat. So all I had to do really to get Rocket Chat going was, all I did was click on the configure and launch, I just gave it a name, whatever I wanted to call the stack. I stated what port it needs to listen on to provide the service. And you could leave it at 3000 or you could use any other one you needed to. And then I just indicated where the directories were going to be created on my OMV service. I put the paths in over there and that's it. Click create. 
takes about a min not even a minute, 30 seconds to 45, 50 seconds or so, it's done. You go to the address with the port 3000 and that's it. You're into the admin setup and you're starting to set it up already. So that's how quick and easy it is. So it was really just for me a, a choice really around the ease of installation and, and updates. So then let's go and have a look at my installation that I've done and we can just see how that's running. So this would be typically the page that would greet you if you've just registered or logged in. Uh, just a welcome message. You can actually customize this. There's an easy place in the admin menu where you can just uh, edit this text and change it to whatever you want. It can be specifically about your organization or whatever the case is. You can mark things like favorites. So the things with the hashes here, many what we're used to is that those indicate things like a room or a channel. If you're used to IRC or Mattermost or Slack, any of these types of things, that's the sort of a standard everybody uses. So you'll see down here, these are all rooms or channels that have been created. So you can mark certain of them as favorites. It'll put it in the favorite area here in the tab, in the side tab, in the sidebar here over here. And it also just includes one liner as to who the last post was from and what, what, what the start of the topic was. Just gives you a sort of an indication there really. There's a couple of discussions. The discussions are things that can happen within each room. So you can also decide whether users can create their own dis separate discussions, separated discussions, or whether no, it'll only be the admin for the room that does it. So you've got a fair bit of control over that. This was an example of a private discussion where it was not public. So if you'd logged into this instance of rocket chat you wouldn't have seen this unless i'd sent you an invite for it so you've got the you can see it's got a little symbol padlock over there you've got the facility as well to be able to create private chats completely private it depends on your organization and then i've got a number of public rooms that are indicated over here as well now by default everybody that has just been created or just registered or logged in are not necessarily going to see all of these public rooms you can define certain of them as default rooms that everybody should, should see. So for example, I did have things like announcements as a default and maybe events, I think it was, but it just creates a little bit more order as well by giving people a starting place. You know, maybe you've got one called welcome new users where everybody can meet each other or something like that. So there is that. These over here are actually direct chats, if you want to call it that. This is with my Telegram bot. There is also a bot for Rocket Chat that you can install and make use of. And I had a test user over here that I was just make, doing some tests with to see what would happen with sharing and making of video calls and that sort of thing. So while on the topic of that, I can also just show here on the top right, you can see user info about this particular chat that you've, you've created. And you'll see there you've got the options to start a video call, start an audio call, or to block the person as well. There's a couple of other bits and pieces of information over there as well. Then you can also start or search for threads, if there were threaded conversations that had taken place. So one thing I don't, well, I wouldn't say I don't like it. You've got sort of two main options really around these type of outline or room type based chats. One is just chronological. So everything just follows one after the other. And if I reply to somebody that's posted yesterday, the reply is just going to appear in today's thread, if you want to put it, separated by, you know, a whole lot of other posts. The other option is to do threaded discussions. If you want to reply in a threaded discussion, you could then click and expand that one discussion and you could see all the replies relating to it underneath. So you, you can do either or really on Rocket Chat. And again, it just keeps it, you know, really, really well ordered and, and that sort of thing as well. So we've looked at threads. I've mentioned already discussions as well. It's almost a discussion is sort of similar to a thread as far as the end user is concerned, I suppose. We've got the option there for video call. There's search in the discussion as well. You can use all sorts of expressions. You can also attach files. It, it depends really again on how much storage space has been allocated to you as a user. And then you can also for this particular, now we're in a chat at the moment, 
you can set things for notification preferences, you can star messages, uh, pin messages, you can export, you can enable end-to-end -end encryption, you can enable off-the-record conversation, you can insert snippet messages, shortcuts, and you can also prune messages or get rid of older messages, which can also be set automatically. So, yeah, that's pretty well much there. And the usual here, if you sit and type the message in at the bottom, you can put in emojis and various other things as well. They give you some hints at the bottom here. You can also see there's some basic formatting like bold, italic, strike through, code, snippets, and so on. Multi-line. You can switch it to multi-line for typing multi-line. And I think that was a scripting language if I remember correctly. And you can also, if you click over here, this is actually recording audio now. It'll put an audio clip into this. Uh, let me just type there. So you've got the option also for audio messages. So this will be very much like some of the instant messages, WhatsApp and Telegram and so on have got as well. Remember, it is a mobile app. A lot of people will use this from a mobile perspective. So you've got that facility as well. And then... Also, on a person's conversation, if you see a comment over there, you can also quote it in a reply, like you can see over there. You can add a reaction to it, whether it's a... Let me just not take the wrong symbol there. Say that one. And you'll see there's a reaction over there. So. Again, very nice for channels and so on. People can actually place multiple reactions and so on as well there. You can reply to it in a thread. You can, we've done quote already reaction. You can start a discussion about this particular post. You can follow the message for any updates and notifications. You can get a link to it. If you want to share it somewhere else, if it's a public one that is, you can copy it, edit it, edit it. Pin it to the top of a conversation star it you can mark it unread and you've got info and and reactions there oh and you're also very important for anything that you're going to be running with a community or organization is the ability to report or if you've got the rights that to do it anyway is to, to delete a a conversation you can give a reason over here to uh, why you're reporting it as well so that is the conversation or the chat view with the individuals and then the other one we can just have a look at here really is so these topics or rooms that I've created here were very ham radio orientated. So this one, for example, was a room just dedicated to JS8 call uh, digital modes. There was another one we just set aside for something like humor so that people wouldn't post jokes all over the place. They've got a particular place and people that wanted to follow jokes or respond or post jokes, they've got a special place to, to put it. Yes, it's empty. Then there was another one created around for, for Outpost, for APRA, SAR Track. These are all sort of ham radio type things. And then obviously general announcements and so on. But if we take things like Jay said, call, you can see there's discussions. These are replies to that particular post. I have got, by the way, in the settings, I've asked to highlight anything where Jay's call, call has been mentioned. So that's why you're seeing these, these are highlighted. And you'll see it's got a topic for the room which is also very standard for rooms and channels. You can obviously mark it as a favorite over there if you want to, and you can get more information about it. You can set, obviously, an image for it. You can put a whole description there for it. There's a short topic. You can set a few rules up here and other things. You can move it to a team or convert it to a team. So Rocket Chat also makes provision for separate teams that are uh, participating on the, on the forum. And likewise, you've got the ability again to make audio and video calls and so on. Obviously, being a channel or a room, you can also list the members. Or the, I mean, you could have here hundreds of members, I suppose. So you've got the ability to search as well, to check who's online or everybody. And you can obviously send out invite. You can get a, a link to send to, in, to somebody in the email. Or you can actually add users that are already on the forum itself by clicking there and just selecting the the users from there what i wanted to show you here though was really whether we've got any 
discussion topics or, or threads here. So we don't, I didn't have any threads created here, but I did have a discussion that was created. It was called test. It was a user created discussion. So this was also a thing you could give to use, rights to users or not. And it should indicate that there was eight replies or responses over there, I think. So if you, if you could have had three or four or five or seven different discussions running in this JS8 call room. And if somebody then clicked on it, they could have got more relevant information specifically about that discussion with all its replies and threaded answers and that sort of thing. So it brings a lot of order to it, I think. I, I like the way it organizes things. Uh, typically, we'll find something like in ham radio, something like JSA call, for example, has got a whole lot of offshoot discussion areas you might be discussing. Somebody might just want to be discussing the setup of radios. How do I do different radios and stuff? Have a separate discussion for that. Somebody else might have something around interference or weak signal or something else, and they can have another discussion running in the same forum. The great thing with this is you build up lots and lots of knowledge management as people are asking questions and replying. And the beauty there is that you could do global searches as well and then really go and look for the mention of anything that somebody mentioned about interference, for example. And then you could find all the related discussions. The public ones are the ones that you've got access to, obviously. Just a quick post edit insertion just to show the searching functionality. If you're standing here in any room, say, and you click on search at the top, you could search on, say, the word radio. And you can also make it a global search over there. And obviously, you've also got expressions that you can use to filter the search further. That's just showing how the option for search works with an option for global search. And it highlights the, the keywords as well. So, um, yes, we've got a couple of events and things here. And things running. These were just these were separate discussions. So, like I said before, you've got your main rooms over here. Within the room, you could click to see if there were any discussions. But the other thing is, on the sidebar, the separated discussions are also listed for quick reference. So you can jump straight into uh, this one was for Outpost Bulletins, and this was Outpost Help, all related to the main room, which was Outpost. So as your boards get busier and busier, you know, these sort of things make a lot of sense to try and keep things orderly, really. The directory over here, you can see all the different channels that have been registered. You can see the different users that are on. Some of these will be uh, bots like Rocket Chat. Oh, I don't know why. Uh, Rocket Cat, sorry, is the one. And Telegram and that sort of thing. And then I don't have any teams at the moment that are set. So that, that sort of explains that. You can also filter here. So if these lists start getting very long and you've belonged to a lot of them, you can ungroup or group. You can you pu push the unread to the top. You can sort by activity versus just alphabetical order. You can hide avatars. You can make it condensed, medium, and that sort of thing. So you've got quite a lot of control over you know what you're seeing. As a user, you've also got a couple of options. You've got a thing like a status message. You can also have a status like online, away, custom, or custom over there, or hide your, your status. Uh, let's go to my account before I get to administration, really, I think. So this would be the individual user's account. And it will go to the profile information. You could use URLs for avatars as well, or upload an avatar. You've got things like name, you've got a username. We decided to use call signs, or I was using call signs, should I say, for the testing. Uh, there's your status message, your nickname, you've got a bio space. You'd have your email address in here normally for notifications. So again, these are useful for organizations because often you want to search also for people that have got similar interests maybe or a particular part of a hobby even in ham radio the person might be into hf only versus vhf these are the type of things you could put in here and then search and find people that have got like-minded interests really then these will be the user preferences so on the localization side you've got a couple of different languages that you can choose 
under global settings, you've got a don't ask me again list. I actually can't remember what that was for. You've got your user preference for auto away and so on. You've got your notification setups, what you want to be notified for, uh, sounds, whether you want every DM or you want to disable it, desktop notifications, messages. You can have certain things that show up in your tray, for example, for alerts and unread messages, clock formats, use emojis, that sort of thing over there. You can hide usernames, hide roles, enter key behavior. That's for the enter, whether it's going to be a new line or it'll be a send. Then you've got highlighting. So I've put that in already. And remember, I said I had JS8 call the word highlighter, but you could have anything in here. You could have your name, for example, whatever you, you want to put in there, really. Uh, you've got the various sound options that you can set, and you've also got your data. So I, you've, I've enabled the download and export of data. That's for people that want to close accounts, but you could enable that or disable that as well in the, in the admin settings. Then under the security settings, you can have two-factor authentication set as well, and you can also set end-to-end -end encryption. So here, and this is what I like, you as the user set your own encryption password so it's not provided by the administrator so again great great security side using this and encrypting in a private chat you're going to have um, very good privacy and security and you can also reset your your key you see for example yeah this is a good sign you know if it re if it resets the the ete key you, you shouldn't have access to that data because that means there was another way to unlock it so you know i like it when you lose your data that that says to me the security is good they're not compromising and then personal access uh, tokens as well. That will be for third-party apps and that sort of thing. So, yeah, got that. That's all the personal view. And then, really lastly, what I want to show is the administrative options. So, we've got two parts. It's the main administration options that have been that are active already. Is is these over here? And then there's a bunch of other additional integrations and other things that you can set as well at the bottom. So you've obviously got an info overview of your server instance, telling you how many users, how many posts, how busy, uh, engagement, that sort of thing. So that's actually quite useful for administrators or if you're running it for organization when you're doing reporting and that sort of thing as well. Then you've got import options. Now this is where you could import Things like user lists, I think it was, and a few other things. I haven't got into it in detail, but you'll see it is supporting CSV type format, HipChat. So it'll obviously do an import for stuff that you've exported from HipChat. And it'll also do an import from whatever you can export from Slack, uh, as well as Slack users CSV format. So that would import all your Slack users or friends from there. This is just a summary of the users that are on the system at the moment. Remember, this is administration, so I'm the admin. Uh, you can see whether online, offline, that sort of thing. This is a complete list of all the rooms that have been created. Here you'll see is whether that was a default or not. Is it something that everybody sees or, or do they have to subscribe to the particular group? You'll see there were some here that I made, site notices, or only just one or two that I made, mandatory and announcements. And then are they featured or not? You can obviously filter here as well for which are private, which are public, that sort of thing. Then you've got invites. I haven't got anything pending at the moment. Connectivity services. Okay, you'll see here is an option log out of rocket.chat cloud. So I'm not hosting in rocketchat.cloud. There is some functionality that they do provide there. And chiefly what I'm just interested in logging in there for was for my apps marketplace to get hold of the the different third-party apps integrations that are that are applicable for one click installation so you don't have to do this you can you can be disconnected you don't have to connect to it and you can actually install those things manually if you need to if you really want to be you, be cut off you can also federate or not federate with other rocket chat instances so you can be as inclusive or exclusive really as you want to be then you've got log files, uh, custom sounds if you've installed them for the system. 
There's federation, as I mentioned. So this could mean that users could follow users at other Rocket Chat instances or and, and you know the number of servers that are federated, that sort of thing. The federating settings are further down here. This is just the summary information. The apps, this is what I've got installed at the moment. And just to give you an idea of what is in the marketplace, you can search over here for the for the different apps, but you'll see there is anonymizers, there's integrations, there's bit, Bitbucket, antivirus, Dart games, Dropbox paper integration, Jiffy for the GIFs. Is it GIFs? GIFs, I think, sorry. X, I just want to check what else is there. Imgar for the easy online hosting you know, of images and so on. You don't have to host on your own server then. Uh, there's Jira integration, uh, search. Here is enabling users to import and receive private messages from Slack instances, uh, workflow, Telegram. So maybe let me just mention about Telegram. I didn't get my Telegram quite to work actually. There was a bit of an issue with me getting it all set up with my channel, but the idea was really that you could integrate with a Telegram channel as far as I remember. If I just open this, let me just have a look. It's omni-channel integration, and it does give some guidance here just as to what you're going to put in for your API and your bot token and that sort of thing. I think the idea was that you could post from here into a Telegram channel, and you could follow a Telegram channel from within Rocket Chat without leaving Rocket Chat. So, you know, again, it gives you that sort of omni-channel type, one place you go to, and you can do many things. So unfortunately, I didn't quite get mine going. I was hoping to actually demo that, but I'm not sure what, what wasn't working there. Uh, there's also a Twitter integration, uh, WebEx meetings, a WhatsApp. That's for the business API integration as well. Uh, WhatsApp tickets and Zoom integration as well. And of course, there probably are additional other third parties outside of their marketplace here that you could find or develop yourself you know, or have developed. Email inboxes, I hadn't set up yet, but it seems like you could create email inboxes as well. And I noticed it does have SMTP settings and that sort of thing as well. So you can set up a sort of as an email server also from within Rocket Chat. Custom emojis you could load here as well. There you can see I've got an integration with my Telegram channel, but I haven't got it set up properly. It's not, it's not working, but there is that. There's also outgoing integrations. There's Zapier. These are some of the standard integrations, the Zaps, should I say, that you could make use of already. And then you could also integrate your own bot into Rocket Chat over there. On the OAuth apps integration, this is for those single login type applications where you're going to use a Twitter. ID to log in or a Google ID or a Facebook ID or whatever the case is. So these would show you what is active at the moment. The mailer side, these are just some of the settings you could set a, you could send an email from here as well. If you've got custom user statuses set up by default, that'll be over there. And then you've got the various permission settings you can give to the different levels of user. So whether it's an admin, a moderator, a leader, a owner, a user, a bot, a guest, anonymous, a live chat agent or a live chat manager. So you could even give permissions if you wanted to, to public guests or, you know, what's been shared publicly, you could give people rights to do certain things if you wanted to. I don't think there is anything on you at the moment. Uh, and likewise for bots or standard users and for the owner of a particular discussion or group or whatever the case, what they can do. So you've got a lot of uh, different settings. This is only from A to, to C already. There's from M onwards. And so on for the different settings. So you can do a lot of fine tuning and tweaking and there's a search to find the right setting or any applicable setting. And then under the settings itself over here, you've also got similarly for all these various OAuths and you can see Nextcloud, LinkedIn, and so on as well. 
Okay, so let's go down to things like accounts and that sort of thing. These are the default account settings. You can allow anonymous reading, allow anonymous writing. This will be for new accounts created. Login expirations. You can force forget. In other words, force people to log in as well over there when they um, close their windows. There's also some default settings for enable alter away that sort of thing these are defaults that people have already set if they've created a new account there was the sidebar remember i talked about before you can show extended medium or condensed certain group favorites that sort of thing avatars settings sizes provider uh, external provider if you want to hook it up and have it all ready for users to use iframes for embedding iframes so this week, for example, you could even have a little news service running and embed it within an iframe or a Twitter feed or something like that, actually. Uh, what happens with failed login attempts? How many times and how long they get blocked for? IP whitelisting. Login logs as well, if you want to keep. Password history. This is where you can force people to choose new user passwords and not reuse old passwords when they change. Password policy as well. You can set the minimums for having to at least use whatever when they create a new password. And, and then there's also some of the settings for registration. And then lastly, just two-factor authentication settings as well over there. Analytics. If you were going to, you could set up things like Google Analytics to have it integrated to your site for usage. I don't use Google Analytics. You could say what features are going to be enabled or tracked. Uh, Pewik is now Matomo. I'm actually using Matomo at the moment for keeping track of my site's usages. So I have actually got that already in there. Matomo is fairly easy because you just have a client ID for each different website you're tracking. And in my case, it's configured, number six is configured for Rocket Chat. The assets are things like those, if you look on your web browser, if you look at, you'll see things like the little icons on the tabs, that sort of thing. Or background images, the favicons, all these things. You could set them also for the different uh, platforms like Android or Apple as well. So that's where you set those. Atlassian Crowd, I think that was integration if I remember correctly with Atlassian. Um, block stack. Bots, this is for search bots, I think. I can't remember what CAS is. I think it's also integration. Custom emoji file systems, you've got a couple there. The custom sounds, discussions can be enabled or disabled, the end-to-end -end encryption. So again, you could enable it, you can completely disable it for your site. It depends for you. You can also have them encrypted by default if you want to. So, you know, you can actually make your rooms and your things by default a lot more secure. Email settings. These were just settings really for things like replies, if you wanted to have email functionality set up as part of your site so that it would be replies and so on and so forth sent to people's user accounts to the user email addresses this is where you would sort of configure it all so for example the invite there's the message you'd use for the invite header and footers offline messages registration messages that sort of thing your smtp setup and verifications this is if you bought an enterprise license Here's the federating options, whether it'll federate with other Rocket Chat hosting instances. So this is where you'd set that up. I haven't done that. File uploads, you can set maximum sizes, different media types that are or restricted to certain media types. And you can also block certain media types as well. So you've got control over that. And then I see also Amazon. So this will be integration with Amazon Storage, I think that's any other file system. Oh, I've, sorry, that's the file system. 
that's where I'm saving to on my OMV hosting. There's a specific directory that I've set aside there for where any stored or uploaded files go to. Google Cloud Storage, Google Vision, and WebDAV, of course. So WebDAV always nice, very for, for general uh, use and for open standards, you know, with integrating with various platforms like Nextcloud, that sort of thing. You'd set that up over there. General settings. So you could reinitiate the setup wizard if you wanted to. Uh, there's the site URL. Mine is not open for registration, but that's where it's registered to at the moment uh, with the URL that I've got I'm using for it. You can change the site name, the document domain, language, default language. Uh, you can here allow invalid self-signed SSL certificates if you wanted to. You could restrict access inside iframes. Here you can enable favorite rooms and various other settings. You can force SSL. Just be careful with these things, by the way. When you force these things on, you might just find yourself locked out if you don't have valid SSL certificates. So always be cautious. If it's often a, ba a config file, you can just go in and edit and change this, and then it sort of puts it back like it was before if it does happen to you. Google Tag Manager. These are the robot.txt instructions you can put in here, and it will basically edit the robot.txt file for you from within admin. You can enable the app framement, uh, framework and enable development mode here as well. Oh, there's a game center, I haven't tried that. There was iframe integration and what, what can be enabled from within there. I think this was Rocket Chat Survey, I can't remember. So there's a lot more here. I've got on, but you can turn off st sending s general statistics to Rocket Chat. This is for stream casting. Custom translations, that's of character set. And that will just be update, uh, for checking updates. So it can also check for its own updates and updates from within the admin screen. IRC is interesting. I hadn't I hadn't paid enough attention to this myself, but I see it can federate as well with Internet Relay Chat. And yeah, I haven't had enough time to really look at this. That's a standard port for non-SSL IRC. I see it is integrating or federating. I see with IRC.rocket.chat, but from what I can see here, you could probably set a custom. IRC federation. So you could possibly have this federating say to Freenode or you know one of the other IRC servers as well. Just various layout settings. So this is where you could change the background colors and, and so on of the screen. Quite a lot of options there. Content. You can enable things like a home button. And this is that text I talked about where you logged in that you could see. Okay, it has got HTML formatting on it, but that's fine because that allows you to be able to format it for like as a web page. But that's the, if, that's the, if anybody clicks the home page, it displays this help page. So you can put help or background info, or whatever, terms of service information, login terms. You can put this for, to acceptance before anybody registers and a privacy poli policy which you can spell out as well over there as well as a legal notice and the side navigation footer at the bottom of the sidebar there then you've got custom CS CSS for design if you want to really go to town and change the look and feel a bit custom scripts fonts I'm not sure what old colors are and then user interface has got a few options as well that you can also enable and disable over there. LDAP, of course, is for the LDAP authentication and login. I haven't got that active. Live stream and broadcasting, it's where you can enable or disable the, that functionality as well as the IDs and API keys. So it integrates with live stream. 
uh, log. You can just determine what level that your logging takes place. Message editing, you can disable. Many people prefer to be able to edit their messages, but you can actually disable that. Or after a certain time, that you can allow deleting or non, uh, not allow deleting of messages. So I like that's a lot of control they've got. Oh, look there, bad words to filter. So that's actually quite nice. You can already put defaults in to filter certain words out or cha maybe change them to nicer words. Port settings, time and date. So you can put custom formats in here for ta date and time settings and so on as well. Message erasure. That's for people that remove their accounts though. Video recorders enabled, show read receipts, detailed read receipts. There's an auto linker. You can enable here for auto translate. You could make use of Google. Is it only Google? Oh, Google DeepL or Microsoft for auto translations. That's the DeepL settings, the Google settings, and the Microsoft settings for the translation. There's also Google Maps to enable map view. Color previews. That's for links and so on. Issue tracker links. Markdown, I see. You can enable. Oh, I've got a lot of this not enabled actually at the moment, but anyway. Message attachments. And there was, we tried the audio message. You can also disable that and set what bitrate is to be used. This is just some meta setting, I think, for the site itself. I don't know why it's got a Facebook app ID. It's got robot text stuff here. Google site verification. I'm not actually too sure what that does. For mobile devices, you can disable saving of media to the gallery as well. And on you've got certain screen lock settings, like you can force screen lock. So that's actually quite nice. You can certainly up the security in a few things as well with mobile devices. I suppose it's not going to stop things like screenshots, but anyway. The OAuth I mentioned a bit earlier on was around that single login through a service. So you can enable for Apple service, Dolphin, Drupal, Facebook, GitHub, Google, LinkedIn, Nextcloud, Twitter, WordPress. There's a whole lot of options here. Obviously, you'll just have to configure the ones that you want to have active over there. And there's the Omnichannel. I didn't really go into Omnichannel very much. But I see you can set things like business hours, whether they enabled or it's all 24 hours, CRM integration, that's quite interesting. So you can put custom webhook URLs. That's to, probably to integrate with an external CRM service, uh, cloud-based or web-based CRM service that has got webhook enablement interesting external frames facebook integration gdpr okay so there we go this will be for the privacy eu privacy related uh, settings so there is uh, you can hear consent you can force visitor to accept or in other words or not be allowed to uh, proceed by not accepting Allow to collect and store HTTP header information. So here you go, GDPR compliance as well built in. Live chat. Don't know what RD station token is, it's also an integration. Routing. And then the last one here is sessions. How to handle open sessions when the agent goes offline. Uh, I think Omnichannel is actually a service for businesses to offer for customer support, that type of thing. So this is for that customer service agent, what happens and how long to wait to consider a vis visitor abandonment. That's what it is. This is the off the record conversations. 
So that's enabled for people to say, yes, I want to do an off the record conversation. Here is push notifications, and this will probably be to things like the mobile clients. If you're using the mobile app, certificates, keys, and then some privacy settings. You've got a rate limiter as well for APIs, so that, that you can obviously tweak and tune if you find things are terribly busy and starting to hammer your website. This is the retention policy across the whole instance. So you can, you can set for deletion if you want to have information auto-deleted. A lot of um, businesses, for example, as well, have to retain information for a certain period. This is the type of place you would set that. After that, you don't need to retain the information. So the point is, why would you want to then? And you can apply a global policy to groups and channels and so on as well, including direct messages. Do not prune discussion messages. Do not prune threads. So you've got a few settings you can change there. I can't remember SML. Can't remember. i not sure what that is. You've got certificates, behavior, there's roles, there's mapping, and advanced. Search a default, or you can use ChatPal provider. That I would take it you'd set up then with your API key, obviously, and your default provider. This is just the setup wizard so there's the type of organization it's just um, I don't know if it does change anything specifically but you could indicate that your community type organization an enterprise a government or a nonprofit or another you give it a name for the organization you choose which industry you in size people country this is often important for legal purposes to know what jurisdiction a server is actually under and maybe also stats wise, of course, for rocket chat, you know, is it being used in a large enterprise, that sort of thing. Allow marketing emails. Oh dear. I don't know why I put that on. Public or private. And the other thing is you, I've, my server is registered with uh, rocket chat. So, that you can you don't have to register you could be so mine is actually showing up as a, as a registered server running at the moment this is your integration with slack you can enable that with your api tokens and certain functionality you could have enabled or disabled there and you can exclude bots smosh that must be also an integration there's sms they do offer i see for about three different services there for mobile sms and then obviously you'd set up your API and integration for whichever one or more that you're using. Threads enabled or disabled. You've got various troubleshooting. You can disable certain things if your system or site's not working properly and then see if it improves. This is now the user data download we saw earlier as an option. You can specify a few things over there and you could limit it as well if you wanted to. Video conferencing integration, two popular open source sites. So Big Blue Button being one, and the other one being Jitsi, which is a bit newer than Big Blue Button. You could in, you could in, indicate what instance of of Jitsi. So for example, this is the global public one that everybody uses, but you could have a custom Jitsi instance running in your own own organization or another organization, and then you could specify and point to that and make use of it instead. So again, you can keep your stuff fully self-hosted if you want to. Web dev integration, I haven't got it enabled, but uh, web dev integration will be for things like calendaring and contacts and certain things that have got web dev integration as a standard, then you'd allow people to be able to sync with, with that. And WebRTC, of course, being the video conferencing functionality so there is some default settings already for it that um, you can just enable and you, you've got then this will be what's needed for your video conferencing online inside the channels so 
So that really is pretty well much that. A lot of a lot of settings to go through. So sorry that probably took rather long. But yeah, that's very much Rocket Chat then. So like I said before, it is very similar. To, it's a good alternative to Slack for organizations that want to host their own in-house communications portal or that wants to offer it to their client agents to the public as well. So you've got quite a lot of flexibility, I think, over here. As I said, also, it's fairly similar to Mattermost. Certainly, if you wanted to consider Rocket Chat or alternatives to Slack, I would really consider both Mattermost and Rocket Chat and maybe do a bit of pros and cons. Like I said, in my case, it boiled down to in installation, but there might be some other unique functionality that's different between the two that you know helps you make a, a decision on that. So I'm nearly losing my voice already. That's it for today then. Hope you enjoyed this video. At the end over here, you will see some cards that come up that link to other videos around alternative social media that I've reviewed as well that may, that may be of interest to you. But otherwise, keep well, keep safe out there, and I'll see you in my next video.